Welcome to Expert Delphi Part 2 webinar. My name is Paweł Głowacki. I'm working at Embarcadero as a sales consultant. And this is the second part uh, of the webinar uh, about the recently published uh, book that I have published about uh, two months ago. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to focus uh, on the remaining uh, six chapters. So in the first part of this webinar, uh, I have been uh, discussing some background why this book and we had a, a quick uh, round through the, some of the uh, demo examples uh, in the first uh, six chapters uh, of the book and this book is uh, primarily about building uh, mobile applications uh, with Delphi uh, so building using uh, Fire uh, Monkey uh, library uh, to build a cross-platform uh, natively compiled uh, applications for both uh, iOS and Android, Android with a uh, high-level uh, reusable components. So, yeah, well, I'm, I have been already uh, discussing uh, why Delphi, uh, so I'm not going to uh, spend uh, too much time on this slide right now. Uh, it's quite a unique technology on the market today uh, that you can use just one source code, uh, Object Pascal or C++ in a C++ Builder project and from the same source code you can natively compile to um, iOS and Android which are two main uh, platforms and today uh, I'm going to focus on the remaining uh, six chapters of the book uh, in the first part we have uh, walked through the, uh, the process of uh, installing the IDE uh, we have reviewed some of the uh, newer um, Object Pascal uh, language concepts. Uh, we have seen uh, how to work with files, uh, JSON and XML and then we have been uh, playing with uh, FireMonk in both uh, 2D and 3D with a special focus on understanding uh, FireMonk styling. The second part of the book uh, goes a little bit uh, more in depth. Uh, it's really packed with, with demos uh, so uh, throughout this presentation today I will be walking you through the, uh, some of the demos. Uh, so first we are going to uh, see different aspects of working with a mobile operating system. Uh, so checking the version of the operating system, uh, responding to app uh, life cycle uh, events and also using some of the uh, high level uh, components that uh, make it uh, easy to work with mobile hardware like uh, sensors, uh, like camera, like taking photos, uh, integrating with maps, uh, web browser um, and also uh, going beyond the fire monkey so using uh, um, language bridges. Uh, in the second uh, chapter or in the, in the part two or eighth uh, chapter we look into the Internet of Things and specifically uh, we are going to um, focus on working with uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy uh, so Delphi has a low-level Bluetooth uh, LE framework and a Bluetooth LE uh, component but also uh, specialized um, Think Connect components available through the Get It uh, Package Manager uh, so we are going to uh, have a look um, in this space also uh, this uh, chapter covers building a beacon enabled uh, proximity uh, aware uh, applications and also using app tethering the next three chapters uh, are uh, start uh, from uh, uh, understanding uh, data-driven uh, architecture. So how to structure your uh, mobile app uh, in such a way that uh, you can later on uh, refactor, uh, refactor it in uh, different ways. So we are uh, building a to-do list uh, demo with clearly separated user interface and database uh, access and uh, later on uh, we will be splitting in the chapter 11 this uh, this uh, application into a client server application so the the mobile front end and also the server app uh, running somewhere in the cloud so in the uh, chapter 9 we are focusing on uh, embedding databases using uh, FireDuck uh, database access uh, and also uh, working with visual life bindings and uh, prototyping uh, user interfaces with a T prototype bind source 
component. The chapter 10 is all about uh, all different technologies uh, that you can use to integrate your um, mobile app with different uh, web services. So uh, starting from using uh, just plain uh, HTTP uh, client, uh, native client uh, library uh, through integrating with XML uh, SOAP services and then using uh, uh, REST client components uh, backend as a client, back, backend as a service uh, components, and also using a cloud API to integrate with Amazon or uh, Azure. Specifically, uh, we are uh, in this chapter moving the, our to-do list um, application uh, from using just a local database to store data uh, in Amazon uh, simple storage service or S3 uh, service. And then chapter 11 is uh, about building mobile backend so with Delphi there are different technologies to build mobile backend so we are looking into building a plain uh, web broker backend so with Delphi 10.2 Tokyo uh, Linux support has been introduced so uh, the web broker is an interesting technology uh, to uh, deploy uh, your uh, server-side apps uh, to Linux uh, so we are moving our uh, to-do list uh, uh, application to do this demo uh, so it's now split into a client side and also the backend is uh, moved to uh, to web broker technology but also uh, in the uh, later part of the chapter uh, converted to a backend using a rat server uh, technology that is part uh, of Delphi we are also looking uh, into a uh, basics of using a data snap uh, technology in this chapter. In the last chapter we are focusing on uh, deploying applications to app stores so uh, we take an existing uh, demo app Molecule Hero uh, demo which is a 3D uh, chemical molecule uh, viewer uh, and uh, putting it to uh, either Apple App Store or Google Play Store uh, there is a few words about uh, monetizing applications with uh, components for adding advertisements and also in-app purchases and also how to set up a uh, agile workflow so we talk about uh, refactoring uh, refactorings uh, about uh, version control uh, about uh, unit testing with uh, the unit X uh, framework so le let's have a look uh, into individual uh, chapters uh, so I'm going to first start from chapter uh, 7 so it's all about uh, working with mobile operating system so uh, let me switch uh, to uh, to Delphi the first demo in this uh, chapter about the operating system uh, is about uh, different uh, app lifecycle events so on mobile uh, platforms uh, application can run either in a front uh, foreground or in a background and there are different uh, events that you can intercept and sometimes uh, it's important uh, to understand programmatically if your application runs in the foreground or in a background so there is no dedicated uh, component uh, that um, can be used to it so you have to do it in code uh, so there is an in FMX uh, platform uh, unit there are uh, certain uh, types and there is also the platform services uh, so you can get access to the FMX application event service and you can register your um, our event handler so in our my case this is a uh, handle app event method of the form uh, that is uh, called uh, whenever there is an uh, application lifecycle event so basically application is very simple I'm just uh, depending on the type of the uh, event uh, I'm just logging the output uh, in this on the screen so uh, I'm going to actually uh, switch on my phone so it can be mirroring its content so it's important that we see it on the phone itself because otherwise it would not make a, a lot of sense so I have an app lifecycle uh, application it has become active if I and put it to the background it, it will get uh, certain events so you can see it has become inactive and now it's uh, active again so these are some uh, basic demos 
uh, that we do uh, throughout this uh, mm, throughout this chapter and there is also a simple uh, demo uh, to understand programmatically uh, on which operating uh, system um, your mobile app is working using a TOS version uh, record time from record type from uh, system.sys uh, utils unit. Uh, there are also uh, other demos uh, to demonstrate, for example, uh, how you can uh, embed a web T web browser component uh, inside of your uh, application. So this is a simple uh, simple FireMonkey Forms application with embedded uh, web browser. Uh, there are also demos how to use maps. Uh, so you can see I'm right now uh, in Amstelveen in our office uh, of Embarcadero. Uh, so that's an example of a of an application that uh, is uh, embedding a, a map view uh, component. There are also uh, other examples like how to work uh, with camera so you can actually see that this is my setup. I'm just recording this webinar so I have a Mac computer and you can see a lot of those uh, phones inside of my uh, my screen so I can cancel it. So this is uh, also um, examples of using contacts, uh, using uh, notifications and also uh, what is interesting I believe uh, is uh, how to use types outside uh, of um, outside of um, just uh, uh, let me just quickly go outside of the FireMonkey framework uh, so um, I have this uh, demo here uh, vibrate app that demonstrates uh, how to use a functionality that is part of the uh, mobile uh, operating system but there are no uh, plain there are no plain um, FireMonkey abstractions how you can uh, go either to how to import an audio framework uh, on iOS uh, and uh, call certain methods that are not available out of the box so I'm going through the process of adding additional uh, iOS frameworks to the uh, Delphi ID or calling uh, calling uh, certain functionality on Android uh, directly uh, using the, the, the Java bridge uh, so that that's goes a little bit uh, low level so this uh, first um, uh, chapter is relatively long uh, and it really goes through different aspects of working with mobile operating system uh, accessing different uh, things like sensors uh, and also uh, going beyond what uh, FireMonkey uh, framework provides. Also there is a discussion how uh, what are the typical uh, design patterns used in a FireMonkey framework uh, to in a clear way uh, provide the uh, same uh, functionality that is implemented different across different uh, supporting operating systems. So that's uh, what's uh, the main focus in the uh, chapter uh, 7. Uh, in the next chapter we are looking into the extending to the uh, Internet of Things. So it really starts from uh, there is a demo actually I'm going to uh, switch directly to this demo uh, in a moment that demonstrates a difference between uh, using a plain Bluetooth uh, LE uh, component where you really need to understand different uh, GATT uh, characteristics uh, and uh, different um, specifications and uh, compare the same application but using the Think Connect component uh, that is uh, available from Get It Package Manager and how much it uh, simplifies uh, certain things. There is also a, a proximity demo uh, and also the app deferring demo. So let me go back uh, to to Delphi. I'm going to, to close uh, this demo and um, switch to, uh, to an, a different demo. So I'm going to open this demo it's in a chapter uh, 8 and we have a heart rate group uh, so this is an example of a, a Bluetooth uh, LE um, Bluetooth LE um, application uh, that communicates uh, using a Bluetooth LE with a, a Bluetooth LE enabled heart rate uh, monitor so these uh, heart rate monitors are available from different sports shops and uh, 
it's possible to to work with different uh, heart rate monitors in the standardized way because uh, the Bluetooth uh, LE has a certain standard. So this example actually uh, demonstrates uh, reading uh, a heart rate from a, a heart rate monitor directly using a Bluetooth LE component. Uh, so in the code we need to actually uh, understand certain things about this uh, this specific uh, specification. So uh, if you uh, if we go to the uh, to the um, let me jump very quickly uh, to the web browser, uh, you can see that uh, there is a GAT uh, services page uh, where you can uh, read uh, different specifications. So there is a specific special heart rate uh, service that is uh, standardized so you can see it has a certain uh, number uh, so here uh, we need to uh, use this number as a part of the GUID uh, of the, mm, the heart rate service and there is also another specification that part of this service there are different characteristics like for example measurements of the actual heart rate so this is another uh, GUID that you need to construct and there are certain uh, things that you you can do so that you basically uh, need to go quite uh, low level to connect to uh, discover services get service uh, get characteristic and then you need to at the very low level uh, go into the characteristic and decode from a uh, row bytes uh, the <coughs> actual uh, measurement so this is actually compared the very same application uh, can be implemented using uh, tools uh, available from from get it uh, package manager uh, so I have already uh, installed the in the category of Internet of Things uh, you can go to the uh, heart rate monitor so you can download and install those components and now your life is much easier so the very same application now is using specialized generic heart rate monitor uh, component and our code sim is simplified a lot. So this chapter really goes into a understanding of a, the, the inner workings of a Bluetooth uh, LE, uh, LE um, standard and uh, how, how to uh, communicate with different uh, kinds of uh, applications. So there is also uh, another demo that uh, is part of this uh, chapter. It's a museum app demo uh, that uh, is using beacons uh, for uh, yeah this is a, an example of a demo that could be for example used in a museum specifically here in Amsterdam uh, we have uh, Van Hoog uh, so this is uh, a special it would be for for simplicity uh, there are certain uh, yeah, certain uh, URLs with information about oh, I have done it wrong so I need to do it undo and undo and undo or maybe I just take this this other uh, this other URL and try to display it so basically the, the demo is simple uh, based on a proximity uh, to a certain uh, to a certain uh, painting uh, the embedded uh, web browser uh, displays a certain uh, information about an picture about the picture that you might be uh, watching so just the scenario here is that behind every uh, every uh, painting there is a hidden beacon and here is the uh, certain uh, yeah we we know different uh, values so the beacons has a different uh, uh, URL different uh, uni uh, UUIDs uh, and then uh, there is a simple method that returns um, beacon info so we are passing to it a UUID major and minor number and we get back the name and the URL to display so inside of this form we have a beacon component and here we have a beacon proximity event and those uh, the, the values of these beacons are uh, actually uh, added in, inside of this um, monitorized beacon regions. So <coughs> this is a simple demo. Obviously, uh, it works uh, for you. Need to adjust it uh, to to your 
to, to your uh, beacons if you want uh, to do something similar. And also in this chapter we are talking about the beacon fence uh, components and also about up tethering so just for sending uh, arbitrary information between uh, maybe two mobile apps and maybe between a mobile and desktop app. So this is an uh, interesting uh, area uh, to uh, to watch. Uh, so in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, chapter chapter eight, we really go quite in depth in uh, uh, different aspects of uh, Internet of Things. So next chapter is really starts about uh, building applications, mobile applications that that works with data. Uh, so Delphi has always been strong with building applications that uh, talks to databases uh, so in case of mobile apps the typical scenario is to uh, embed an app so we have a FireDuck database access framework and we can use either um, IB Light or SQL Light uh, databases uh, to embed in a, uh, in, a, in, a in, in the application in fact in the in the in the in the book is not IB Light but SQL Light so that's a typo on this uh, slide used uh, and uh, the to-do list application is introduced uh, as an example of a, a properly architected data-driven app with a clear separation uh, between the uh, between the user interface and data access so there are three uh, three different uh, three different um, units uh, there is a one unit uh, with uh, some interfaces and uh, there is a data access unit data module uh, that only is accessible through the from the user interface through a well-defined interface so in this way uh, we achieve a, a high uh, plugability uh, so we can uh, very easily uh, switch uh, between different user interfaces and different database access uh, implementations and this is uh, demonstrated throughout uh, the book so uh, this is a simple demo in this um, in this chapter we also uh, talk about uh, using t list view component and it has a, a special spe a special designer so you can uh, build applications like for example like for example facebook uh, or other applications with a long uh, list of similarly looking uh, items so uh, we are using this t list view designer to design the user interface for um, for our to-do list and also uh, in this chapter uh, visual life bindings are discussed uh, how to uh, quickly prototype uh, user interfaces uh, with uh, visual life bindings so let me very quickly uh, jump into the this uh, to-do list demo uh, just to explain certain uh, certain things uh, that are uh, important in the context of uh, understanding the really uh, next uh, demos and how they uh, progress throughout the book. Uh, so there is a this um, SQLite demo is a to-do list demo. So in this uh, in this example, we just build it as a standalone a mobile application that is using um, a Fire Duck, uh, and specifically we are using here a embedded database, a SQLite a database and uh, you can see also that there is a, a form uh, with a with a user interface uh, to deal with a to do items and the to do items are really specified very simply uh, this is this uh, interface unit uh, so this is the only piece of information that both uh, the data module and the form shares uh, so the the form uh, knows uh, nothing about the uh, implementation it has a special uh, get to do uh, get to do uh, function that returns an i to do data uh, interface and this is the only way uh, how uh, this uh, is accessed so you can see here that uh, basically in get to do we have a lazy creation pattern to create a, a data module if it's not created and it returns the interface so this is very important piece and here we have a i to do data interface that implements a so-called crude operation or in our case crudle so for create read update and delete and list all records so this is very simple and 
in this uh, example uh, yeah there is a different a different component uh, different query and different methods so this data module uh, implements this interface uh, using uh, queries also what is interesting here is that the database is created uh, on the fly uh, so just before the connection uh, to the database we are uh, combining we are calculating the the what is the document uh, folder what we have learned in the in the chapter 3 how to do it and then we specify the name of a database uh, also the database because the database connection uh, is uh, using open mode create UTF if the file uh, does not exist uh, it is uh, created before it can be opened and also after connect after this uh, this database file is empty uh, so we are using a special um, if not exist clause uh, that is part of the uh, SQLite uh, so after the, the connection is made and the database file is created the the data the, the database table is created and there are different uh, straightforward uh, implementations of different uh, different uh, operations uh, using uh, FireDuck uh, query components here so that's uh, very straightforward uh, and also the form itself uh, it's uh, yeah, it's basically demonstrating how you could use uh, components like ttap control and we have one uh, one tab with a list of different uh, to do's and we have a certain second tab with just an individual data so this could be used to edit data or add data uh, or delete data so this is a <coughs> this uh, is also t list view component and it has a if we do a toggle a design mode uh, we can see that this has been created using a using a designer uh, so there is a certain uh, things you can do uh, to, 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 to specify different items that are part uh, of your uh, of your uh, list view so that's also uh, documented quite in depth uh, in the in the in the chapter so let's have a look at how this uh, application uh, works. I need to uh, enable uh, sharing of the screen again, and we have our uh, to-do uh, to-do list application. That's how it looks like. So I need to do a webinar. I can add a more things like explain explain Delphi. Okay, and that's maybe fun category and I click done and I can add this to the list so this is a very simple user interface if I don't like something I can just uh, delete it and this data is stored locally uh, on the device so uh, I can just uh, very easily uh, go and uh, yeah just uh, put some data so yeah, there's also uh, other uh, demos uh, in this in this chapter that uh, talks about uh, visual life bindings and also uh, doing uh, visual life bindings uh, using uh, uh, a prototype bind source so here we have the same uh, list view but at design time we can actually uh, prototype it I have it compiled but I can also compile it for Windows and uh, before I deploy this before I build a database access layer I can quickly see if my uh, design is okay so this is exactly the same uh, design with a title and the category of a to-do item using a prototype bind source and also uh, using a, a visual live binding so here we have in our in Tokyo we have some uh, different places to find different aspects so you can see that I have a list view and I have a prototype bind source that uh, connects to uh, two different uh, items uh, in the item title and item ca category which are uh, dynamically um, created through the uh, list view uh, designer so this uh, this uh, whole um, uh, whole um, chapter really uh, goes uh, quite uh, in depth uh, into how to properly structure uh, the application the next two chapters 
are about building uh, clients and uh, building uh, servers. So in the chapter uh, 10 we are looking into building all kinds of uh, clients uh, so basically going uh, through the uh, complexity of the of the framework so we start from using just plain HTTP uh, native client library so this is a, a basis uh, for more specialized uh, technologies uh, in Delphi so the first um, demo just shows just using a plain HTTP protocol uh, there is also uh, there are different web services uh, like traditional XML SOAP web services that you, we can use to, to consume so here we are there is a demo of who is a service in the internet uh, where we can return uh, some information through an XML SOAP uh, using a dedicated um, um, wizard there are also uh, different um, REST uh, client components so uh, the next, next uh, demos in this chapter uh, talks quite in depth how to uh, integrate with another service uh, that is available in the web about uh, um, displaying uh, um, displaying data through a REST interface there is also discussion of a backend as a service components uh, so these components can be used to build clients to connect to different backend as a service uh, providers so uh, to uh, different uh, third-party vendors like for example Kinvey but also those components can be used to connect to build clients that connects to the RAT server uh, so that's uh, basically there are demos complete demos in the next chapter when we bu build a RAT server uh, backend and then we use also uh, these components to build uh, clients for it also as part of this as the end of this uh, chapter we talk about cloud API so uh, this is a technology based on the HTTP native client library that make it easy to integrate with different uh, cloud services available from um, either Amazon Web Services or Microsoft Azure Cloud and uh, here we are going through the example of uh, yeah, how to set up connection and co in integrate with Amazon Simple Storage Service so in this uh, example we are actually migrating the backend of a to-do list application that was uh, built in a previous chapter and instead of having a local embedded database we are using an uh, Amazon um, S3 um, Amazon connection info component and in on a on a data module that implements uh, the same uh, database access interface so the, the user interface that we have built with a t-list view and the properly designed uh, user interface we don't need to uh, change uh, NF anything except for the users close because now we are using a different data module and uh, our data module just uh, replaces it so let me go quickly uh, through those uh, demos so uh, yeah I'm going to rather show it uh, in the uh, as part of the uh, this uh, source code so it really starts from the uh, using a plain uh, HTTP uh, client component so this is an HTTP client component that is available from the net category uh, and this is an example of uh, just uh, some text data and actually this is a molecule uh, information in a certain text-based format uh, that is used in the chapter 12 in a molecule a hero application the molecule uh, viewer uh, contains a, a parsing code to to basically build a 3d models of different chemical molecules in this in this format so here we're discussing how to use this uh, component how to uh, use it uh, in a uh, in a synchronous way uh, and how to use it in an asynchronous way so that's important uh, knowledge uh, if you want to to do it in a properly structured application so really want to use an asynchronous mode so we have an on request uh, completed um, event that is uh, called when the download is completed so this application just uh, downloads some uh, data from from a file from a text file so we just use a get method and provide an URL uh, to uh, in fact I'm now deploying to the my iPhone but uh, 
I can also uh, build this application um, here as a, as a Windows uh, application I have already deployed it so why not to show it one more time so I can just go I need to do a mirroring and now you should see my application so that's my to-do list application but right now I want to have an HTTP oh this is this is this application and you can see we are downloading and in a moment we see there are some uh, information in a text format that basically uh, explains the structure of a in this case I believe it's a uh, it's a uh, hemoglobin or something like this it's quite a complex complex uh, data and there is a you can make it's just an example of a text data that can be uh, accessed through the uh, through the arbitrary uh, yeah HTTP uh, URL so that goes uh, a little bit uh, deeper and uh, we also here we have a, a example of an um, integrating with a, uh, in the who is app is an example uh, of uh, integrating with a I'm going to compile it this time for 32 bits uh, so there is a who is uh, so we are using here a file new other and um, in the web services we are using WSDL importer so this is a simple service that you provide the URL uh, and uh, it calls the who is uh, internet service and displays information about uh, this URL so in the chapter we are going through the process of importing the, the, the URL and here we have a, a certain website that provides this functionality if we if we run it we can actually uh, just uh, using the SOAP web services find out uh, what is the example.com but you can provide uh, other names and check uh, who the certain belongs uh, who um, whom, uh, to whom the certain uh, domain uh, belongs there is also um, another service so we also uh, in this uh, in this uh, chapter try to cover all types uh, of um, services you can integrate uh, so we can also integrate uh, with a service uh, that the inQ stats service uh, so let me show you so that's a, a service you can find uh, information about it uh, in the on the incubu.com uh, you need to generate your own API access key so that's a common thing in when you integrate with uh, rest apis uh, in many cases you need to have at least the, this uh, access key and uh, we can actually see very quickly uh, what is this all about uh, here paste and go and different uh, demographic data so basically we specify them the codes of the countries uh, uh, and we and years and we can get a JSON in just uh, one operation so uh, here is the code to actually parse JSON and here is the uh, data module uh, with uh, different <coughs> REST client components and there is an in-memory uh, fire duck memory tables uh, we also use here um, the live bindings uh, to display uh, this information on the on the screen yeah but I need to show it from from here then it will be better because you don't see it from from a data module because the connection really uh, is from the from from the form uh, so I need to close this and go here and now if we display and uh, the live binding designer we should see that <coughs> we have a list view and tool and uh, tab control with list of the countries and with individual data and it's using uh, visual live bindings to connect the list view component uh, with a f um, data module uh, and the uh, in-memory uh, database uh, table so let me show you how this uh, application uh, looks like uh, on my uh, on my phone uh, so I'm going to share it again and you should see in the moment okay airplay monitoring 
okay that's 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 fun and we have an in queue uh, starts up so we have and um, we can put certain codes and we can see the population of Poland Portugal and Netherlands so in Poland this is the population for the last year so this is an example of a data driven uh, application that you can build with visual live bindings using uh, rest client components and that's uh, that's that's fun to build and then the next uh, demo is actually uh, replacing uh, a backend uh, of our to-do list application but storing data uh, in the cloud so you need to have an Amazon simple storage service cloud for this demo to work so you need to create an a credentials and here you can see that I have a certain test data so uh, webinar and the nice thing about uh, this demo is that when you store data in the cloud it's really you you have the same data across uh, different devices so I have just added this title one category a webinar blah 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 but if I just go back to uh, to Delphi and open uh, this other a demo uh, I should see that this is also uh, visible from uh, I need to close this visual live bindings designer open an existing uh, demo and that's the to-do list but this time uh, with uh, data module so we have the same front end but this time uh, the, the the backend is implemented not with uh, FireDuck uh, embedded database but with an Amazon uh, co Amazon S3 component so there is a data module that implements the same interface and it's uh, yeah it's relatively straightforward you can create an instance of Amazon storage service class passing the Amazon connection info component with all the credentials and then there are different methods to uh, to yeah do all the crude operations but this time uh, converting this data to to JSON and I have a certain utilities here uh, that takes uh, a to-do uh, records and converts them uh, back and forth uh, to JSON so that's an uh, interesting I believe uh, an example and nice thing is that now if I compile this application uh, on Windows and it's not my mobile phone uh, I'm actually talking to the same to the same backend so that's an uh, interesting uh, yeah, lightweight uh, possibility to create a serverless uh, backend uh, so it's just integrated storing data uh, in the cloud as, as a collection of JSON files so that's uh, mm, that's chapter 11 and the last chapter uh, in the uh, not last but in terms of uh, building database uh, applications in moving this uh, to um, to uh, to the cloud uh, so it really goes into a discussion of different uh, server-side uh, technologies available uh, as part of, uh, of RAD Studio, Delphi, its web broker, Data Snap and RAD Server, and here we are actually moving the existing uh, to-do list application. But now what we are doing here, we are splitting this into two. So we are keeping the same uh, user interface. So in our case, this is this form uh, with. Uh, with a T list view component, we keep the data access uh, data module that communicates with uh, uh, Amazon S3, but we are now splitting this into two uh, applications. So, uh, in first uh, demo, uh, we are using a, a web broker server, so we are implementing these um, crude operations um, on a, and exposing them as a plain uh, web broker. Uh, application here also uh, in the in the in this uh, demonstration uh, we are um, basically going into the details uh, how to uh, build a web broker uh, based uh, backends uh, based on the based on the different technologies so if you for example have an uh, web broker application uh, in many cases uh, you want to uh, to migrate it to uh, from a, a standalone uh, application, uh, so this is an example of a standalone web broker application to a, a yeah, dynamically linked library. Uh, so the the trick here is to to share uh, a web module. So there is the same <coughs> web module uh, unit that implements the functionality 
the crude crudel functionality uh, of our uh, yeah just to uh, to uh, expose uh, these uh, different data and we have a get to do data so this time uh, it's not the the form uh, that communicates with a data module uh, using a i to do data interface but this is a, a yeah, web broker application and we have a, also this uh, application uh, can be consumed uh, using a rest component so these are different rest client components uh, that communicates with different uh, apis so again uh, this is basically just showing the same structure so we have uh, the same the same form uh, with with the same uh, functionality but now it's split it across two different applications so we have a mobile applications with the very same front end and now a back end that is using uh, a web broker technology to communicate uh, with the underlying amazon storage and also um, i think that's the even uh, more interesting more modern is to use a rat server so uh, in this uh, next demo uh, we are using uh, just uh, cre create an rat server package uh, so we have here a uh, rat server uh, resource uh, that provides uh, access to the uh, underlying data so again we have we communicate with this data module that remains unchanged and just provides the uh, interface to the underlying data but this time we are communicating from the uh, from different uh, mm, APIs or different endpoints and on the client so we can actually see how this works we can run this uh, this uh, rat server you can see that there is a special resource called to do uh, and we can uh, run a client we can compile it for mobile or for for, for Windows but here is a client and again what we should see uh, is that that's uh, that's our client uh, that uh, has exactly the same user interface but this time uh, we are using a backend as a service a client components uh, to and a TMS a provider component to communicate with the uh, rat server so that's uh, a lot uh, and it will be very <laughs> difficult to go uh, in uh, every detail of every a demo I just want to give you a, a rough uh, overview uh, of what is there there is also an example of a data snap uh, technology and uh, explanation how it compares to the other technologies so I think that's uh, a lot of knowledge in this uh, chapter so yeah there is also explanation why you want to use a multi-tier architecture especially in the context of mobile applications it is a must uh, to communicate with the inter uh, some intermediary layer uh, that communicates with the actual uh, data so the last uh, chapter is all about app deployment uh, so we are taking the existing uh, demo that I have created uh, some time ago a molecule hero that is using the skills that we have learned from chapter 5 uh, how to uh, structure a 3d fire monkey applications and using uh, these native uh, uh, HTTP clients uh, there is a parser that takes information about the 3D molecules and display them uh, in a uh, uh, easy to, uh, to, to nice to see uh, 3D way it also talks about the process how to put your application to App Store uh, to Google Play Store uh, how to use uh, ads how to use uh, app purchases and also how to uh, use um, embedded version control inside of the Delphi and also how to build uh, agile workflows using um, unit test unit uh, unit testing uh, so actually we can have a look on this uh, on this unit tests actually it's the last demo how how to work it with it it's important that when you have a complex application you want to have a, a different uh, unit tests in place so every time you change how your application is implemented uh, you can uh, yeah, verify it through the running a test so here we, if you want to go you can go to file new and in other there is a whole category of 
uh, unit X test so you can add to your project a uh, the unit X project so this is an example of a just a plain uh, application which is my very complicated calculation app so that's the form that is doing 2 plus 2 equals something so uh, if you click on this plus it's a button it should use the functionality of the calculation engine so there is a dedicated calculation engine class that you need to create and you call its add method and you should see the result so we can also because this calculation engine has a potential of becoming a complicated scientific calculation engine but for starter it just implements an add method so we are introducing a, an error here just to verify that if it's working ok or not so my second project which is a D unit test uh, test is uh, sharing the same calc engine unit but there is also an additional unit with the test itself so we are uh, instantiating a calc engine class we um, get rid of it but here we call add and passing 2 and 2 and we are expecting 4 so if this is not 4 then we should uh, get an error so if we run, run this this test right now we see there is something wrong because it's different there are three tests that failed and you can also see that uh, here we have a custom attributes that we have discussed in the second chapter so with custom attributes we can specify different uh, collections of um, input values for different tests so we just have one method but it will be run two times with different parameters so we need to go to our engine and fix the typo and change it to plus and now if we if we run uh, the test again uh, we should see that everything uh, works okay so yeah that's uh, very quickly what this uh, last chapter is all about there is also one chapter I didn't want to put number 13 but it's a short chapter with some of a review what this book is all about and it's really about uh, yeah all different uh, technologies that you want to know and understand and try that are part of Delphi uh, to help you build a cross-platform mobile applications you can really become a mobile developer superhero and build uh, Android and iOS applications uh, so we have ID uh, we have language we have some basic skills working with JSON XML uh, building uh, FireMonkey 2D and 3D user interfaces with, with styling and then in the second part we are really looking into a uh, how to integrate with mobile operating system how to also build uh, Android uh, services and uh, how to uh, yeah, use some components like sensors like maps like web browsers uh, to access a mobile uh, operating system functionality and also it's all about uh, when you start to build a real serious applications you want to build those applications and that talks to data so uh, that the chapters in the second part of the book uh, focuses on embedding databases uh, building uh, yeah, solid architectures that you can refactor and extend and move to to other platforms so moving can uh, uh, just one application uh, moving a database access from FireDuck to uh, to cloud API and then taking this application and splitting it into two so you have a client server using either web broker or RAT server uh, applications so I hope that is uh, a lot of a lot to learn from this uh, uh, from this book uh, and it, you will find it useful it's it's available online on Amazon or directly from a publishing a house packed publishing uh, you can get there and it's available either as a printed book or as an ebook with a foreword uh, of David uh, inter Simone David I and it's uh, more than 500 pages uh, of demos and uh, practical uh, Delphi uh, knowledge. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, I hope that you will find this uh, book uh, inspiring and you will uh, yeah, will be you will become a developer superhero and impress people that never heard about Delphi that you can from one source code using components and rapid application development build stunning natively compiled uh, apps 
for major mobile platforms Android and iOS. Thank you very much and um, if there are any questions I'm happy to take them.